Hello everyone and welcome back to Dark Souls 2. This is going to be another short introduction, which hopefully I won't forget that I recorded it like last time. Um, I'm still doing farming here at the uh, Tower of Flame. But I thought as a quick intermission, um, I should do some stuff around Majula. So, yeah, we should be fine. Um, I, I think I also died a few times, um, but while I'm still farming, there's still a good chance I will die because the more aggressive version of the Hide Knights, um, as in the the ones that are actually prowling about instead of just sitting down and waiting until you attack them, um, they're quite dangerous and um, you don't have much space to fight them if you try to kind of go to where you have space, sometimes multiple enemies attack you. Uh, death is just a very real danger, so that's why I've decided to uh, remain dead until I've finished. Now we've gotten this house key from the um, from the NPC who was kind of he was crawling on the ground, saying something about uh, trying to make a map of Drang Lake, and he also said that I should not delve too deep into the house because weird things were going on there. Something like he heard strange noises. Um, and that's kind of true. There is something, but uh, we, we will definitely go explore. Um, the reason I'm doing that is because I know it's a fairly small section and um, we do get a nice reward for it. Also, in between this episode and the last one, um, I did play my sort of private character a bit more. And I think this is meant to be a map of Drang Lake. Now, the world in Dark Souls 2 is far less interconnected than it was in uh, Dark Souls 1. So I'm not sure how reasonable it is to expect a map. It's just kind of... Nah. I don't think it makes that much sense to look at the map, which is why it's not really a proper map, it's just, I think it's supposed to be one. I hope you can't hear the baby crying in the background. I swear I didn't hit it much. <clears throat> anyway, there's a skeleton down here, I think it always drops a human effigy, I might be wrong on that. Uh, there's a soul vessel and an Estus flask shard. I believe these are, these items, um, or at least... I don't know. Um, some of these items changed from the base game to the Scholar of the First Sin edition, so there are some differences there. Um, I just don't know exactly what they are. Um, I don't think you got Soul Vessel and SS Flask Shard in the base game. And I think that chest also contains some bonus stuff if you installed the DLCs. Again, this version of the game has all the DLCs, but it's just a bit, I don't know. Complicated, I guess. Okay, we have Is to wait for her to stand up. To see. However... And it's still annoying when you have to click through four dialogues before you can uh, access this screen. So, yeah, let's give her the Estus Flask shard. Um, I just remembered I hadn't gotten this, so I wanted to show it now. Um, oh, darn. Should have leveled up, but... Okay, I did get that corpse. There. And let's level up. Um, I think I still want a bit more adaptability. Let's push it to... Ooh, is there a breakpoint? Not really. Let's push it to 18. Uh, it's human. I don't care too much about that. Uh, let's go two more points in strength and the rest in vitality. Now. Um, since I'm here, I might as well show this. Um, since I'm playing offline, this tablet will tell me how often I have died on this character, which is five times. If you play online, I think that tablet show tells you how many times anyone playing online has died ever. I believe that's what it does. So that'll just be a really huge and fairly meaningless number. Um, when offline, it's your own character's deaths, which is... I guess more interesting. Okay, um... I 
think that's really about all I wanted to show. Oh no, there's one more thing. I uh, I forgot to show. Actually, it's an item I tend to miss quite a bit. And it's just up this ladder in this chest. It's not big, but it, it is nice to have um, this early game boost. It's just a titanite shard. Sliding down ladders works differently in Dark Souls 1. I've, I've said that before, but I'll, I'll keep repeating it because I keep mixing the games up. I keep playing Dark Souls 1 in my streams and uh, Dark Souls 2 for the LP. Um, anyway, my longsword is plus four, the bow is plus three. I guess I could upgrade the Drangle Lake shield. Could probably also wear some. Hmm. Does this look good at all? Nope. Okay. Well, let's keep our head free then. Um. Okay, yeah, that's that's all I wanted to show you. I'll go back to farming the Tower of Flame now with the slightly upgraded character. Um, yeah, see you in a moment, hopefully. Okay, back for another quick one. Um, still working on clearing this area, by the way. Up there is a dragon, but I won't tackle him in this segment. Um, I just wanted to show you this guy, because you're not really going to see him. Um... Well, there, there's more of him later in the game, but um, as opposed to the other eight knights in this area, <clears throat> he's got a spear, not a sword, and so he's slightly different. I thought I might as well um, show you that. If he does that combo attack... Um, Especially with a 100% physical shield, like the Drain Lake shield. You can easily block it and then get a backstab in. As you can see, <clears throat> he really does make that quite easy for you. Um, I will probably kill the dragon on camera. But the way it works is you shoot it with a few arrows and then you leg it. Um, you can do the, that in melee. But I find that quite difficult. Um, you basically he, he does breathe fire, obviously, being a dragon. Um, you can't really see him, but you will when I deal with him. Um, <clears throat> yeah, uh, but, but well, you'll probably see that in, in just a second, actually. Um, for now, I just wanted to make sure you see the spear guy, because next time I start recording, he will probably be vanquished to the point where he's not respawning anymore. Um, I did grab the item, right? No, I didn't. Wow. I think that's a divine blessing. Which, it does a full heal and restores all status effects. But again, because people were saying, Oh my god, these things are so overpowered. Why are you putting them everywhere? They made it so that the animation to use it is very long. So they are pretty much useless in combat. Um, I think it's like over two seconds of cast time. Which, considering how fast-paced the combat in this game is, two seconds might as well be death. Especially by the point you uh, you need to use a healing item, as powerful as a Divine Blessing, um, you, you're probably already in trouble, so it taking so long basically makes it kind of useless. Anyway, see you in a second. Okay, and let us continue. I have pretty much finished clearing that area now. Um, I'll just show you quickly. In the course of clearing that, I got three Hade Knight Swords. And I would know how to pronounce that word in German. It's German for Heather. So there you go. Also a nice name. Anyway, um, I got three of them. And I previously had the notion that they are fairly rare because on... Two other characters on whom I cleared the entirety of that section. Um, I didn't get a single one. So, yeah, apparently either I'm lucky or I've been very unlucky on these two previous characters. Um, anyways, I... Sorry, anyway. I've decided that this character has a sad lack of ranged options. So I'm just going to go into some miracles. Um, 
Not sure if I'm going to go much into it, but maybe a little bit. Anyway, let's talk to this NPC. We met her after the Dragon Rider boss fight, but she also sells miracles. Um, previously, I said I didn't want any. I think I'm now going to buy one. Oh, hello there. An honor to see you again. This room is not as it seems. There are two, not one pathways leading out. And only this lovely thing reveals the other path. And this, you lovely thing, only runs on miracles. Shall I provide you with one? Now, she is scamming me. Um, if you kill her, it turns out she will just drop an item, which can be used to turn this room. So it's not like she has some unique miracle power, she just happens to have the item that activates this mechanism. She still wants 2,000 souls to move it, um, which I think is, well, fairly annoying. The problem is, my only alternative would be to, um, to kill her, then she drops the item. But that would be a sin. Um, and I think the guy who removes sin is not as easy, not as easily accessible as in um, Dark Souls One, so it's just a major pain. Uh, she does sell the Ring of Prayer, which gives plus five to faith. It's pretty strong. Um, what I'm really looking for, however, is the Lightning Spear Miracle, which I don't think I will be able to really use it yet, but. Whatever. She... I don't think she actually believes in any of the gods. She's just kind of trying to scam people. Um, yeah, I don't think I will be able to spec uh, Faith high enough to actually use the Lightning Spear yet, but I will eventually, basically. Uh, eventually, basically. Hmm. That sounds a bit bad. Um, but let's use the opportunity. Blah, 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 blah. And level up. Now first things first, I will need attunement high enough so that I have one slot, which happens at... Wow! 10 attunement! Uh, and pump the rest into faith, so that's at 11. Now... Um, I should have enough arrows, actually. I'll just quickly go human. I mean, I could always crack some of these souls for, for more souls. Makes sense, right? And, um... I am as yet undecided whether I actually want any of the, um... Any of the items that I can make from these souls. Um, some of them I might, some of them I might not. It's kind of... As I said, I'm undecided. But yeah, this area is now clear of enemies. That's how I got all those souls. Uh, which did get me a nice, nice amount of level ups. I know the attunement was kind of a waste at this point. Probably should have gone into faith first. But then I just... I would just end up forgetting that I need the attunement and just... Hmm, it would just be a bit annoying. So I just did that first. Um, incidentally, I kind of forgot to mention this in the earlier section. We got a soul vessel when we went into the, um, into the mansion in Majula. And a soul vessel can actually be used to respec our character. Oh, come on. I know I can hit him from here with a short bow. I do hope I have enough arrows, otherwise I'll have to go and buy some. Nah, that should be fine. Now, if you do this from here, he'll just fly up and uh, throw fireballs at you. I think that's the only attack he does that um, hits you here. And it's easy enough to avoid, so... Um, I know you can melee him. But I can't. <laughs> um, I've tried it once more on another character. 
I mean, I did it eventually, but it was... I died three times. And, uh, I don't know, that would not be fun. So I'm not too keen to do that um, on screen, I guess. And this is safe. It works. They put a ridiculously powerful enemy this early into the game. Ouch, did not run far enough there. Um, I think it's fair enough that I punch him. Well, I don't know why I said punch him there. What I meant was cheese him. And it's just not really cheesing him. I mean, he does have the means to attack me. They're just fairly avoidable. But the problem is, if you try to approach him, there's quite a long open area. I'll, I'll show you that once he's dead. Um, okay, a few more rounds and he'll be dead. And yeah, he will throw fire at you, breathe fire at you, rather, um, while you try to make your approach, and oh, there we go. You can't just run past him, because I think you need to kill him to be able to basically progress past this point. And I'm fairly certain that they added him in the Scholar of the First Sin Edition to make getting to this upcoming boss more difficult. And, I don't know, I find it quite annoying, so... Um, there were a very few sections in the first game, in Dark Souls 1, that I thought were a bit cheesy and annoying and cheap. And those sections, as you will probably see in once I do my in-depth run of Dark Souls 1, which I'm preparing for it, I'm leveling up the tunes on stream right now. Well, not right now, but currently, I guess. Um, but yeah, I have no problem cheesing sections of a game that are just obviously trolls to to increase your death counter. Um, like the Anor Londo archers in Dark Souls 1 IO, I pretty much always cheese them. I've done them a few times the legit way, but they have ridiculous range. The area where you have to face them is really annoying, so... I stand in a safe spot and do what they do. I snipe them from long range. Which is exactly what they do. So it's not like it's unfair. It's just using their own means against them, basically. Um, and yeah, I, I don't know. This dragon, you can see how there's like a really large open section here where you have to run across to get to him. And he will breathe fire, which has a knockback effect, has large damage, and there's no way you're safe. So... I think you're meant to block it or something. Not quite sure how you're meant to go do this. Um, I know it can be done in melee. I've seen it done. Um, but it's just a bit annoying. Anyway, we are about to face one of the most annoying bosses in the game. Well, one of the bosses that I personally find annoying. Um, it's not like the fight is insanely difficult or anything like that. It's just that there's no reason for him to be here. This is Ornstein from uh, from Dark Souls 1. And Ornstein is probably the correct way to pronounce him. Um, I mean, they gave him, like, dark lightning instead of normal lightning attacks. But let's face it, it's Ornstein. And I know English people have trouble pronouncing the uh, Stein or Stein which would be a German way to pronounce it. Um, so they always say Steen, so that would be Ornstein. But um, I think these names are originally of Yiddish origin and thus are pronounced in a German fashion. So you would actually say Ornstein or Ornstein, I guess, if you want to be a little more English about it. But definitely not Ornstein, that's just... Um, 
I don't know, it's the way Americans can work it out, can, can pronounce it, but it's not necessarily correct. Um, you also get this with a lot of um, of Jewish names, which are, funnily enough, <laughs> supposed to be pronounced in a fairly German manner, because um, just the language origins are fairly similar. It's, um, I think it's Yiddish where a lot of the names come from and yeah that's just that's just how you're meant to pronounce them like Spielberg which literally would be German for play mountain wow I'm really messing up there and I could not raise my shield, so once the first hit of that combo got me, um, that was me dead. There was nothing I could have done about that. Um, but we'll try again. Um, yeah. I guess I went in a bit of a tangent there about the name, but... Um, it's just the nature of reality I guess that uh, languages borrow from other languages and when sort of populations merge and move like a lot of Jews during the Second World War are going elsewhere um, you will suddenly find words from a language uh, in a different part of the world of the world rather um, and that'll lead to, I guess, pronunciation problems. Um, actually, what I'll do just for fun, you saw the damage I did there. Let's go with some aromatic ooze. I'm not going to use a bright bug for this fight. Um, it's not that difficult. I just messed up and got hit by one of that, one attack of that combo, and that's just the end of it. Um, raises maximum HP. It's probably better than the stone ring, which is not going to do much. Uh, let me pop on a life gem. Buff with the ooze. This adds magic damage to my weapon, but I think I've explained that before. It's not too bad. I don't think it does much more damage, though. I don't think he has ma high magic resistance, though. I'm I might be wrong. Ironically, although he was added purely for fan service because people liked the encounter with him so much in Dark Souls One, he's far less threatening. Um, firstly, he doesn't have his friend Smo with him, which in the first game, um, that encounter was so memorable for many people it uh, it really made their experience I guess whoa 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 whoa, whoa. Ah. this might have been a bad moment to heal mm, no we're fine but yeah the point is um, the Ornstein and Smo fight is fairly difficult. But that's the reason it's memorable. Um, whenever you see someone streaming Dark Souls for the first time, that's the one fight everyone warns them about and everyone's excited to see on a blind playthrough. Just because that's the fight that really... It sort of... It drives home the point that Dark Souls is trying to make that you are facing a world that is beyond you, in a sense, and you are weak and meaningless. But you're kind of the only hope that there's left in this world, and um, so yeah. Um, see how this is not a difficult fight. I just got unlucky and um, 
the first time around that he had that pretty nasty combo and actually managed to hit me with it. Um, I'm not going to talk to this guy yet because he doesn't really want to talk to me at this point. Um, he is the guy responsible for the Way of Blue Covenant, which I think is very similar to the... Um, No, they're the Blue Sentinels. The Way of Blue is the guy... Yeah, the Blue Sentinels, I think. Um, anyway, they're kind of like the Dark Moon Blades. They um, sort of... They attack the guys that attack others, essentially, in PvP. That's what they do. So, yeah. Um, but you can't join them unless you've actually done one of those invasions successfully. Um, you saw in the chest next to him we got some cracked blue eye orbs. But I already already got a fair amount of them from um, from farming in this section here because the knights can drop them on occasion. And similar to the cracked red eye orb, I can use this to invade another player which it has to be a player who has sinned, which basically means he must have attacked other players, or I believe killing NPCs would also count, but I'm not entirely certain if they maybe separated PvE and PvP in terms of sin. I don't know. Uh, I don't also don't know why I'm running back here. No, it doesn't matter. Um, yeah. So, if you successfully invade another player and defeat them sort of as a revenge guy, you know, like the Dark Moon Blades, you get a token of reprisal, I think? Or a... no, token of fidelity, they're called. Um, and only if you have acquired at least one will that guy talk to you and let you join the Covenant. Which is a bit of a pain, because that stuff... That would be a good way to get Boltstone, which allows me to upgrade my weapons to Lightning. Um, but cannot be done yet, because I don't have that token, and I do not intend to do any PvP. I am not good at PvP, I dislike the notion of how PvP works in this game, so I'm going to play offline. Um, I think it's even worse than the PvP in Dark Souls 1, and that was already fairly annoying, but in this game they just kind of went onto a whole new level, and... I think the PvP itself is more balanced, but it's more difficult to avoid. In Dark Souls 1 you could just go hollow without much consequence and everything would be fine. In this game, no. You're just open to being attacked. If you've killed the area boss, you can still be attacked. If you've just died, you can still be attacked. Um, which just leads to annoying situations. Anyway, that was Ornstein, the ridiculous fan service that has no place at all in the game. But they shoved it in because, oh, remember this guy you really liked from the first game? Here he is, here he is. Please don't look at how bad our game is. Just like him. And hey, bastard sword. Uh, rather, hate knight sword. Um, I might use this, I'm not certain. It gives me... Oh, this is meaningless. Um, as you can see, it's 75 plus 74 physical, so that's about 150. Plus another 73 lightning damage. My longsword plus 4 instead gives me... 230... 233 damage physical, but no lightning. So... I'll just go with this. It, it'll probably do a little less damage at first, but we'll see. Um, it will basically scale with strength, dexterity, and faith. Um, but yeah, I think going into No Man's Wharf would probably be something for another episode. I'm not sure how long this one's been now, but I'm just going to cut it here. Um, next time we'll move into the next area. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this one, and I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.